Hello, and welcome to Frontier Community Access Television. Thank you for joining us tonight at Frontier Regional High School for tonight's varsity field hockey matchup between the Red Hawks and Minichog. We are going to go onto the field now for the senior ceremony because it is senior night at Frontier. And then we're going to do starting lines, and we'll be right back with the start of this game. Welcome to Senior Night 2022. It is at this time that we would like to recognize the seniors that have made a commitment to the program for the past six years. With their constant effort, dedication, and drive, they have made contributions which factored into the success of the program as well as memorable moments. At this time, Rebecca Wallace West with her parents, Tanya and Kathy. Ella Flanders with her family, Heidi, John, and Brooke. And Lila Roach with her parents, Lori and Seamus. Recognize the Minichog seniors, Kaylin Sarasulo, Christina Aguilar, Maeve McConnell, Caitlin Radway, Nicole Foley, and Shay Rice. Congratulations, seniors. Tonight's starting lineup for Minichog. Number six, Sar Kaylin Sarasolo. Number nine, Christina Aguilar. Number 10, Ainsley Sheehan. Number 11, Audrey Izzo. Number 13, Maeve McConnell. Number 14, Mary Wodowitz. Number 15, Kendall Gates. Number 18, Kate O'Connor. Number 31, Elena Lucas. Number 42, Nicole Foley. And number 48, Shay Rice. And our starting lineup for the Frontier Red Hawks. In goal, Ella Flanders. Number one, Macy DeMeo. Number five, Lila Roach. Number six, Ashley Taylor. Number nine, Harper Modesto. Number 10, Madison McKemmy. Number 12, Delaney Fifeel. Number 13, Rebecca Wallace West. Number 16, Abigail Grover. Number 22, Haley Hufkowski. And number 25, Claire Kirkendall. Hello and welcome to Frontier Community Access Television. I'm your host, Mason Smith, and we're joined tonight by guest host and former 
Frontier field hockey coach, Stacy Chapley. Good morning, Mason. Or afternoon. <laughs> no, <laughs> evening. Evening. Sun setting just across the field. It's yes. a beautiful sunset yes. here tonight. Yes. I, I was lucky <laughs> enough to um, be the middle school coach for, I think, six years under Missy Mahar. Yeah. And learned a lot about field hockey. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, of course, any student that goes to Frontier knows Miss Chapley as one of the science teachers. <laughs> science rules. Got to say it. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everyone watching, thank you for joining us tonight uh, at the Frontier Regional Track and Field for this varsity field hockey matchup on senior night. We've got the Frontier Red Hawks against the Minnetrog Falcons. Minnetrog is 10-2-2 coming into this game. Frontier, 7-2-5. All right. Well, uh, I believe it was last week they played Long Meadow, and it was mm -hmm. a zero zero. Really, that zero zero tie. Zero zero tie. That is a huge success for Frontier. Wow. Um, Long Meadow has always made it to the state finals and has oh, won really? numerous, numerous titles, state titles, just like our volleyball team here at yeah. Frontier. Uh -huh. They've won um, state titles. I don't know how many times in the Division One. Um, with the new setup, I'm not quite sure. But uh, that was a huge win. It was a tie, but for Frontier Field Hockey, that was a win. Yeah, morale-wise. Yes. Right, yeah. All right, well, we're underway here at Frontier Regional. Frontier's going to have possession to start off the game. Drives it up the field, and there's a, we had a stoppage hack. of play. You can, <laughs> yeah, you, I, don't, I don't know the terminology here, so... <laughs> this Chapley's going to help me out with that. Yeah, so the ball cannot hit your feet. can only be that on the right sense. side yeah. of the stick. can't be on the back side of the stick. Um, I, it, I'm learning here, folks, so don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't get too upset at me if I don't make any sense. So Minichog is another extremely strong team. Mm -hmm. And so this should be a really yeah, good matchup. Yeah, judging by the record. Frontier fighting for it up there. And the, is, it, is it called the goalie box? I was just announcing soccer last night, and that's what I'm used <laughs> to calling that. It's a net. It's a net, yeah. like the, the region around it. You're getting close to it. Do you call it like the... So there's the circle. Right now, um, there was an infraction, and so yeah. Frontier has a corner. It looks like Lila Roach is taking out. Mm -hmm. So it has to come outside the circle Yeah. and then back into the circle because if the shot is taken from outside the circle, it doesn't count. Ah. Yeah. All right. So there's been many times... The ball has gone into the net, but the shot was taken from outside the circle. It's no goal. Oh, all right. That's good to know. Frontier starting off strong on offense in the first yep. couple minutes foot. of this game. Yeah, I saw that one. So another corner. So the first corner didn't wasn't executed very well. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, this... Playing out here on the football field is extremely difficult. Because it's curved, right? You not not like so much that it's curved, oh. but the divots, it's not a nice, even, smooth field. So that ball is dying in the field. It just... Yeah. Or it gets stuck. Um, it, it can take a bad bounce. Nice centering pass there. Ooh, ooh. Looks like a oh, shot on the Another corner. There. Um, so the the ball isn't moving smoothly yeah. at all compared to is the, reg the regular varsity field. Yeah, would that be like because of like the grass length on here? Kind of like you know how they cut it differently uh, for the fairway and such and such and exactly, like for golf. Exactly. Exactly. Part of it is mm -hmm. is how tall the grass is, um, how much patches is going on. Because you have to remember they've played, <coughs> I believe, four football games out here. 
Yeah. <laughs> and those cleats and those yeah, and there movements was, and digs are... There was girls' are, soccer yeah. just last night. Exactly. All of that is adding to to the texture, and that mm -hmm. can really mess things up. Yeah. All right, another infraction. And as you can see, the Minichog team... Um, they have the goalie in the goal and then four other defensive players. And they can't leave the goal till the ball is passed inbounds. And everybody else has to come back to the 50-yard line. And cannot move mm. till... Ooh, ooh, ah. ooh. Took a bad bounce and wasn't able to get that connection. Yeah, that would have been a great setup. So it went out of bounds. So they're going to bring the ball up to the start, up to the top of the circle. Yeah. And pass it in, and we have a lob going in. Manichogs tries to roll it up the sideline, but it's going to go out of bounds. That's the correct terminology, right? I assume that's the yeah. same. Yeah. yeah. That's All the right. same. Yeah, it we're went out of bounds. Sure. <laughs> 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 I was, I made a comment about this last night when I was announcing a girls soccer. It's uh, kind of hard to see the out of bounds line since it's not like in white and that's you know for me I've been announcing uh, football a decent amount that's what I'm used to calling is out of bounds but you know it's a little right. farther out yeah cause, um, the field hockey field and, and I think the soccer field are a little bit wider than the football field yeah they are and then I think the <laughs> and it looks it looks like the uh, the field hockey field and all the lines and everything, that's painted in red. red. Yeah, because they had it in blue last night for uh, the soccer game. And I can see a couple lines going across yeah. the field. In yeah, and it's really paint. hard to see. Yeah, definitely. Especially um, under the lights. It was easier to see when I was just standing up here and the sun was still out. But Another infraction there. Yep. So Lila brought the ball back to where the infraction started. Yeah. The Minichog player, the has to be the opposing team has to be five yards away from oh. from that start point, which they were. And it's it's sometimes easier to identify it here on the football field than when you're in. Yeah, the Yeah, because you got yeah you got the yard lines right there. Yeah. Frontier's trying to push it forward. Another infraction. So the words infraction, they don't use like penalty or foul or something like that? No, like I, it's I, call, I call it an infraction. Because basically, yeah. you know, it's stopping the play and giving the ball to the opposing team. Mm -hmm. A penalty, to me, I think of in um, like hockey. Yeah. Ice hockey, you know, you go to the penalty box. Yeah, or like in terms of football, you know, just. Um, you can get a penalty if the cards show up. Um, and you can lose a play if, 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 if the call has, they've had a warning and it gets to mm -hmm. a certain point. And they've got like the yellow and red cards, yes. like same as soccer. Yeah. yeah. So the first, I think the first penalty would be like two minutes and then if it keeps then it it can increase yeah after further after and that further you on get yeah. up to a five minute penalty where there's one player off the field mm -hmm. and remember there's 11 players on the field 10 10 players in the goalie yes for each team for each team similar to the soccer part yeah Manichog's trying to push it up yeah on the far I believe side line. Minichog has a turf field, but I'm not 100% sure. A, a lot of the field hockey teams um, around uh, uh, around us and and um, heading out to Worcester County and the eastern part of the state, yeah. they're all playing on turf. Ah, I see. You want to see some beautiful dancing in field hockey play? Mm -hmm. Watch the watch this team. You can take these two teams, put them on on turf. And and it's absolutely amazing to watch that game. 
Yeah, completely different than the way that they're playing right now, yeah. I assume. And that's all because of the field conditions. I, we have great, we have wonderful um, cr field crew that takes care of our fields, but there's only so much you can do on this football field. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, like so many other sports use it as well. I mean, it's football, soccer. Yeah. And then track uses it in the spring, of course. Yeah. For events like uh, javelin, it's the first one that comes to mind. We got a push. So mm. that's an infraction against us. Ah. Okay. So they're going to move the ball back to where the infra where it took place. Oh. Frontier's going to try and regain possession. Clear the ball. And that's what they seem to be doing. They've got a trio yep. up front. So we have three forwards, three midfielders, three defense, and then a sweeper, and then the goalie. Mm. So for Frontier. We got an aerial, and whistle was blown. They called that probably because that was a dangerous. Ah, uh, makes um, sense. Aerials, <laughs> air when performed great can get can can set you up really well. Yeah. But um, there's lots of little fine rules around it mm. as to if it lands too close to the opposing team. Yeah. Stuff and. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. At one point, you couldn't do any aerials, and then oh, now you can. But there's restrictions around it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we've got just under five minutes left in this first quarter of the game. Still scoreless here, and it seems like the pendulum has swung swung back in Frontier's favor as they've kept it in Minotrog's end of the field for a little while now. Whistles blown. Quick stoppage of play. All right. So we have another corner happening. Ah. I was jotting something down and I missed it. <laughs> so usually a corner happens within that circle. Yeah, so if there's a, a fouler and like yeah. that kind of thing within that circle, then it goes to there. Yeah. If Makes it's sense. an out, outrageous um, foul um, below the 25, at the discretion of the ref, they can call a yeah uh, a corner. So that was an interference as far as uh, the Frontier player ran in front of our player when the ball was being passed. Oh. So... say that was a foot yeah <laughs> <laughs> a foot seems like the kind of stereotypical call is like a handball or an offsides in like soccer oh. that's that Lila Roach who's got the ball now for Frontier, passes it up. Whistle's blown again. 2.20 left in the quarter. Frontier, nice little Ooh. centering pass there. Ooh. 
corner. One of one of the cheers that sometimes you'll hear the JV players cheer is every corner is a goal because you have the advantage to get that goal. Yeah, and quite clearly what's happened so far is Frontier has been getting all of the corners so far. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, Frontier with five corners Miss Russell. and Minichog with zero corners at this time. Oh, okay. So the clock has stopped running because they're keeping, um, the official time is with the keepers down on ah, the front. That makes sense. All right. So that that was called because she didn't carry the ball five yards below the 25-yard line. Oh. Oof. So. Little missile there. Oh. So we're probably under a minute by now. Yeah. Lila Roach, pass up, trying to get it to Ashley Taylor, and that's the quarter, it looks like. All right, so we're one quarter into this game, scoreless, but it seems like the pattern that I've noticed so far in this game, Miss Chapley, is it started off, Frontier seemed to be going really strong. They kept it in Minotrog's end of the field for a very long time, and then Minotrog had a few minutes where they did the same to Frontier. They had it on the other end of the field. And then it's the position of Bauer has swung back to Frontier. Right. Yeah. And um, we're seeing a lot of, of, of missed passes because the ball is taking a strange bounce. Yeah. Um, or it's being diverted because it's hitting a rut. And, uh, and that's just the name of the game when you're playing it out here on the, on the football mm -hmm. field. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they are they are sticking with it. They are you know they they are both teams. This is a really well matched up team. Oh yeah. Uh, Minichog and Frontier, and so we're going to be seeing uh, some really good uh, field hockey out here. Right now, as it stands, I believe if I've been keeping track properly, because I get distracted, mm. <laughs> is uh, advantage wise. Frontier has had five corners. Yes. And um, Minichark hasn't had any corners. Yeah. Um, so that was five opportunities for a possible possible goal. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, even though Frontier hasn't capitalized on any of them yet, they have those opportunities. Yeah. And that's a very important thing. Yeah. And it's a and big And you advantage. just got to keep going. Exactly. You just got to yeah. keep, mm -hmm. keep it down there. Keep it in the circle. So we've pretty much hit twilight here hmm. at Frontier Regional. You can see just a peak of the yeah, sun. Just a little bit on the horizon there. <laughs> if you can squint past the stadium lights. <laughs> so here we go. So this is quarter two. Quarter two. They used to play a straight 30 minute halves, two 30 minute halves. And mm. then um, during the 2020 COVID year, they, they um, changed it up. They changed it up mm. for several different reasons. Yeah. And it looks like Chog's out really fast. Oh yeah. Frontier's gonna get it back. Try and drive it back up the far side. That's Harper Modesto battling for the ball right now. She's been a very strong uh, midfielder over there. 
and having Lila as the center midfielder mm -hmm. has really created a strong right side. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a decent amount of uh, Lila already in this game. Yep. And then on, on, on the left side of the field, closest to us is uh, Madison McKemmy. I mean, the three yep. of them together are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that was a dangerous aerial. So coming back to Frontier. Yeah. Falcons are going to hit the ball forward. Gets it over the midfield line. Ball is going to stay in Frontier's possession after a foul called. It certainly is a cold night here, although not as cold as last night for the girls' <laughs> soccer game. And certainly not as windy, too. That was the thing that was killing us. We're at 48 degrees right now, folks. I've got four layers on. <laughs> Two sweatshirts, <laughs> among is other that things. All? <laughs> Two sweatshirts, t shirt, and a flannel. I got a t shirt, total. a fleece, and a semi winter jacket from. Yeah, that would get. I've got pajama pants under my sweats. <laughs> no, because uh, last night with the girls' soccer game, we were up there and it was windy and it was, we were just standing there and we were just shaking. Was, I bet. Ugh. All right, here we are for another corner. Frontier's six, right? Yep. Manichog's going to break it up a little bit. Yeah, and they're going to get the ball back. It's a little bit slow on pace game because of the field conditions, but there have been times they've, yeah. in the past, that the teams have played where the grass is like four inches deep. Oh, the, you know, it <laughs> Nice oh. pass up to Rebecca Wallace-West there. Good defensive play by Manichog, number 48. We had a behind uh, hack. 42. That's my bad. <laughs> Haley was just trying to get that distance. Yeah. Getting it back towards the circle. Ooh. Oh. That was a good right setup opportunity. Yep. Couldn't quite get a stick on it. Yeah. No, but you see, Miss Chadley, this is really reminding me of the girls' varsity soccer game last night. And I was talking with um, Aiden Weiss, our guest host, um, for that game about this. The girls' soccer team just has this, like, big sense of community. And you can see it on the field with, like, the passing and the coordination that they have out there. And, you know, you're seeing it tonight as well in this field hockey team. There's not, like one or two, even three players that are really, you know, making things happen out there. They get down close to Minichug's net and they pass it around, try and get an open shot instead of just, you know, taking it for themselves when they can. And this is an extremely young team. There's only three seniors on this team and yeah. there's a starting eighth grader out there. Really? Yes. Which so this, the eighth this is extreme for Frontier, this is an extremely young team. And to do what they've been doing all season long is a credit to the coaching staff yeah. and also um, to the to the the uh, rec league that has um, been doing extremely well the past several years with yeah. third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. <laughs> so, um, so it's been an amazing. Um, 
it's it's just been amazing just to to, to watch the development of these of these kids as they come up. There's another eighth grader who just subbed in for Frontier, Stella Heflin. Oh, corner. So first corner for Minichad. Yeah. Yeah. We've got 8.45 left in the second quarter. Minichog's got an opportunity oh. here right in front oh. of the net. Frontier's going to try and clear it. And they're, they're going to retain possession, so they're going to get it out of a bit of danger here. That was a close call for Frontier. Is it? Yeah, it's half, not health one. <laughs> All right, Frontier still with the ball. Forward pass up to Taylor. Minichog intercepts a pass. Going to try and send it back the other way. Pass up ahead of the Frontier defenders. Minichog is going to get there first. Centering pass gets intercepted by Abigail Grover. Foot. I believe that's what she was signaling. Yeah. Maybe we should try and learn the referee's signals. That could probably help us out a bit. Well, you know the, you know quite the signals, but not all the signals are always yeah displayed. <laughs> Another foot. Ooh. Oh. That was a dangerous. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Went right by her head. Jeez. Oh, nice. Manichog wins a battle at midfield, but gets overturned. Someone's tying their shoe out on the field. Pass up to Rebecca Wallace West, who's going to retain possession there, tries to get past her defender. She does, Ooh. looking for someone to pass to. And the ball's going to go out of bounds on Minichog. So Frontier going to try and keep pushing. Foul called. Frontier keeps possession. So no, unfortunately, Frontier couldn't get a stick on it in the circle. So uh. Lila, Lila was moving it to the net in hopes that someone could get get there and tip it with with their uh, stick. And so I since see. it was yeah. outside the circle, no goal. That's like when you get all excited, then you're yeah. Like, oh. Frontier has to keep that 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 yeah. pressure. They got to keep that pressure up. That was a great opportunity for them, and they were almost there. The ball went in, just no one there in the circle when they needed it. But Frontier still fighting for that ball. Roach is gonna take it now for Frontier. Passes it up. Oh. But the
The ball is going to get overturned to Minichog. They're trying to get that aerial. Sometimes yeah. it's worked and sometimes it hasn't worked because they're trying to They're trying to scoop it up. Yeah, trying to can. scoop it up so they can avoid some of the bumps and divots. Because, mm -hmm. of course, that's going to slow the ball down, and that's not what you want when you're trying to clear it out of oh, your own territory. Corner. corner number seven for the Red Hawks with just under four minutes left in this first half. Pass to Roach. We got a delayed whistle right now. Oh. They can hold the whistle for a certain amount of time and yeah. if you lose possession, then same it thing as like in hockey, you got a delayed penalty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Manichog now with the ball. Going for that long drive, trying to get that field yeah. position. Oh, missile right there. <laughs> Minichog pushes up the far sideline, but Frontier is going to get it back after it went out of bounds, I believe. Forward pass. Gets intercepted by Minichog. And whistle's blown. Minichog retains possession. Forward pass. Minichog has players up front. Are they going to get a shot on the net? They aren't, it seems. But they get the ball back. Trying to send it back in. Make something happen. Minichog has a, some great opportunities here. Ooh, corner. And the whistle gets blown. Yeah. Corner number two for... Falcons. No. Any idea what that call was, Miss Chavley? <laughs> <laughs> it was an aerial, and I think that is an illegal move. All right. We'll, we'll, every, go, we'll go with that. In, in years past, that would be considered illegal. Ah, uh, yeah. Every year, there's always the slight changes of course. to the yeah. rules as what what oh. would be acceptable and not acceptable. So, um, so I think it was considered dangerous. There was too many people there. Yeah, makes sense. And so, Roach with the pass up into the circle. Frontier's got a player there. Hits right. it towards the net, but it's just a little to the right. We're, we're under the two-minute mark now to the half. And at halftime, we have um, our Frontier Youth Juniors field hockey team coming out Ooh. on the field. Give them a little recognition for their hard work. Yeah. Roach with the ball. And that is the half. All right. So here we are, folks. Scoreless after 30 at this field hockey matchup at Frontier Regional. Um, I hope we don't have a 50-minute intermission. Oh, it's <laughs> five minutes. All right. There we go. <laughs> so um, we've... Got some recognition for the Frontier Youth Juniors team during halftime. And Ms. Chapley and I will return with some more commentary for FCAT in a couple minutes. You are watching Frontier Community Access Television. 
I'd like to call your attention to the center of the field. Introducing the Frontier Youth Juniors field hockey team. They They are four to six graders in the Frontier Regional School District. This amazing team of athletes is having a second undefeated season and won the Valley Cup in Holyoke for the second year in a row. They have scored a total of 49 goals together this season with three games left to go. They are looking to expand into two teams next year and include third graders. They are coached by Evan Grant, Gabby Richard Harrington, Mary Ellen Sloan, and Stephen Sloan. Good luck with your last three games. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. I am still Mason Smith and we're still here with Stacy Chapley. And hopefully this is the same game. It is the same <laughs> game. It's scoreless. 0-0. <laughs> zero, zero. Very well matched team, although Frontier has had more possession in the Minichog defensive zone. But let's get to settle in and watch some good field hockey. So we've just started the third quarter now. And already Frontier's putting some great pressure on Minichog. Frontier trying to keep possession here, push it forward. And like Miss Chapley said, this is a very evenly matched game, both in score but also in terms of uh, controlling the game. We've had a pretty... Oh, corner right off. Oh, jeez. That was a foot, big yeah. time. <laughs> you could really see that one. <laughs> but Frontier has had a decent amount more corners in this game. But despite that, Minitrog has had several good opportunities to score. Oh! It was so Jeez. close. Came out to the top, back down to the side, and just couldn't get enough on it to get it in the goal. Ah. That was a great opportunity for Wallace West right there. Although I think that may... I think the goalie may have touched it, so we can call that a shot on goal. Yeah. <sighs> it's definitely a lot hard. Like, right where they are right now, it's kind of hard to tell where the ball is when it's on the ground because you got all the leaves right around it. Yeah. Well, that was a dangerous swing. She missed the ball, and there was a uh, Minichog player very close by. Yeah. Someone had made the comment that the refs. Whew. Oh, there's a nice aerial. That was pretty. Gained a lot of ground, but it landed right in front of a frontier yeah. player. We have a hack. Roach takes the ball for Frontier. Moves it up the near sideline. Chips it in towards the net. Roach back with the ball, Oop. and it's going to go out. I think for us, following the ball up here on the far side of the field is harder. Yeah. But down there, th there's enough of a contrast. Oh, yeah, definitely. So the ball went out on Minichog, and they start on the 25-yard line. Nicely. And unfortunately, the ball just didn't want to move for Lyra. Yeah, that was some good aggressive defense there by Minichog, though. Good pass up. 
But it's Claire Kirkendall with a nice back. little pop. Yeah. And ball is going to go to Frontier. Roach hits it, and it's going to go out of bounds, deflected off of a Minichog player. Ooh. Powerful swing there. Ball's going to get all the way into the circle, goes through a couple Ooh. Frontier Ooh. defenders. That gets scary when it's right in front of the net. Yeah. Like that. Froach clears it out a bit for Frontier. Passes it up to Ashley. Ashley Taylor. Yep. And it's going to go out of bounds. Yeah. The right side of the field is you're playing on your right side, your strong side of the stick. Yes. So that's why you tend to see a lot more play heading on the right side of the field. Yeah. Which for Frontier, uh, last half was all the way on the other side of the <laughs> field because they switched sides. And a, occasionally you're going to see the, the players will actually use that right side line as a defensive person, as a yeah. protection, and run it along the sideline and up. I think we've seen that once or twice in this game. Ball goes out on Minichog. Under 10 minutes now in uh, this third quarter. Yep. Went out of bounds, but there was a oh, there was infraction a called before flag. that. Yep. Nice so drive to gain some ground. And the little bounces there are going to send it all the way out of bounds. On the opposite side of the field. But you can see how badly that ball was bouncing. Oh, yeah. No, they were, they were right in the line of the ball. They should have been able to, like, you know, hit it down or stop it or something. But it just but it bounces. Yep. Corner. And is that corner number three for Yeah. Yep. And it looked like there was one shot on goal. It looks like Ella may have kicked it out. And yeah. Minichog capitalized, and then the then the corner. Minichog trying to make something happen. They've got no one there. So Frontier will try and clear it. Falcons push it back up. And they can't stop it on the grass. Off a little bounce, I think I saw. So it's going to be Frontier's ball. Nice drive there by the Falcons. Haley did a nice clear coming right out, coming after that ball, pulling it out to the outside. Oh, and right there, did you see that? She was just driving down the sideline and the ball just stopped. And now Minichog has control of it. Frontier gets it back. Now Minichog. Manichog's got it in the circle. Delayed penalty. Yep, got another corner for Minichog.
Pass gets intercepted by Red Hawks and is cleared out of the circle. Macy DeMeo with the ball for Frontier. Tries to get it past the midfield line and a yep. uh, foul called. It's gonna stay Frontier's ball though. Got some nice distance there. But there wasn't a Frontier player to, to pick it up. So Minichag was. Yeah. Missed swing there by Minichog, number 15. It sets up an opportunity for Frontier to maybe make something happen. But they keep getting pushed back. Lila's pulling it to the other side of the field. Great strategy. It's a good play there. So, Minichog's ball. Powerful drive up the field. Gets by almost all the Frontier defenders. Number 31 for Minichog tries chasing down the ball. But Abby Grover is fighting for it, not giving up. Minichog does get the ball, though. Tries to make a little move around defenders. And a foul is called. So she's repositioning. She didn't start from where the infraction was, ah. was called, so they're making her stop start. Got it. So she did the reverse pass, which allows them to then go forward. Gets it into the circle, cleared out by Frontier. And Madison McKemmy's there. Gets into a battle with number 15 from Minichog. And is knocked down. Stick gets knocked away, but she gets right back up. Doesn't seem to be injured, which is good. <laughs> Frontier has the ball on the far sideline. Rebecca Wallace-West, I believe, makes a nice move. Gets it by, almost gets it by two cool. Minichog defenders. And a foul called on Minichog, so Frontier's going to keep the ball. McKemmy trying to push it up. Oh, another infraction called on Minichog. Nice little drive going for Frontier here. Oh, oh, and we've got a Minichog player down. We've got a Minichog player down. They won't call. Holding her head. Til, til, yeah. We have an injury on the field. Looks like number 13. Maeve you McConnell. Been, you think it might have been like a stick to the head, possibly? That mm -hmm. seemed, because she was right near the ball when it got hit away from her. Ooh, Ooh Dangerous, yeah. Those those drives they can they can easily get you some yardage, but you also don't know who's gonna be there to get it. Yeah. That's very true. And uh she's coming off now. Getting subbed in for number 16, Nora Dumala. Ooh. There's a foot. Pass up by Minichog on the near sideline. Abby Grover's gonna hit it out of bounds. And we're under two minutes now in this third quarter. Still scoreless. Yeah. No, but this there's two kinds of scoreless games. There's the scoreless games where 
you know, no teams making any progress and you don't see any kind of score happening anytime soon. And then there's games like this where there could be a score at any moment because both teams have had opportunities to and they have the ability to. Nice so centering Ashley pass. to Macy, to Rebecca, and uh, just went Dang. out. That would have been beautiful. And that's the kind of team play that I was commenting about before that we see in a lot of uh, teams, especially, like I said. Yeah. You, ha you have to be able soccer. to move as a unit. Yeah. Um, and a lot, and what you'll, you may not pick up on it, but if the ball gets past the midfielder, defense comes up on the ball, midfielder falls back mm -hmm. to where the defensive person was. Yeah. Once they get beat, they fall back so that you have this cascade in order to make sure that there's going to be plenty of people defending the, t defending the net. Yeah. Ooh, nice drive by Minichog. Gets stopped by Frontier. Minichog gets it back, though. Little chip shot forward. Abby Grover is going to get it for Frontier. Oh, there's the end of the third quarter. So we're three fourths of the way done with this game. Still scoreless. And. We said it just a couple moments ago, folks, but anything could happen. We could see a score from either team. We could see a couple of scores from either team. Or we could see none at all. As a coach, you'd be yelling out instructions for the team. Okay, moving it up, moving it up, moving it up. And then all of a sudden, boom, there it goes. Opposite way. Exactly. It just changes on a dime. We actually saw a little air dribbling um, back in the second quarter where they actually oh, yeah, bounced the ball that. on the, f she moved about maybe um, 10, 15 feet dri air dribbling. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very often. At one point that, that was illegal, but ne then it, oh. now it's legal. Yeah. And the, 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 the stick handling is amazing and how quickly they can. Oh yeah, it is flip it around, pull the ball back. Um, you'll see them, they'll actually do... <laughs> when, when we would be in practice, and they'd practice what they call baby scoops, <laughs> where you just lift it up just enough to get it over somebody else's um, stick. Yeah. And I, and I would always call them bunny hops. That was, <laughs> that was the joke on the field. Time to do the bunny hops. It was actually the baby scoops. <laughs> but it's a lot harder to do some of that fancy stick handling on, yeah. the, on the rough surface. Oh, yeah, that, that definitely makes yeah. sense. I mean, we've had it with our, our, tr our regular um, varsity field. We've had visiting teams come, and they're like, oh, my, this is just almost as good as turf. That's how, wo how well yeah. manicured, how well the... the um, the grass is taken care of over there. But as you said, there was a soccer, girls' soccer game last night. A couple of nights ago, there was a boys' soccer game out here. Football last Friday. Yep. No football this Friday on this field. Nope. They're playing out in uh, – who are they playing? It's an away game. Do you know Miss Russell? <laughs> Miss Russell doesn't know. <laughs> Belchertown. Belchertown, we're told from above. I just remember talking to one of the players this afternoon. This this afternoon. I th I thought it was Belcher Town, but I was also talking to a boys varsity soccer player, and they're playing against Belcher Town today, I oh. believe. I think maybe even right now, but they're saying that Belcher Town always has. It's like a Division One team, really great soccer team. But. Yeah, I was talking to a couple uh, Minichog players before the game, and they uh, asked me if they were in the town of Deerfield or the town of Frontier. And I said, you're in South Deerfield. And they were like, yeah, we, we don't, this is the middle of nowhere. Like, does, does he, it's like, which way is Conway? I was like, 
Honestly, I don't know, but, you know, there's not all that much there. We are kind of in the middle of nowhere, generally. Well, when I first moved out here, I had an aunt go, why do you want to live out there in the boondocks? And I said, what do you mean the boondocks? The boondocks. I said, it takes me <laughs> 20 minutes to get to a major mall. I said, it takes you 20 minutes to get to a major mall. The only difference is in 20 minutes, I've traveled through three towns. For you, it takes you 20 minutes to get from one end of town to the other. Yeah. No. Oh. Now, we're, we're right where we're supposed to be. That is very we well said. Trade it for the world. I love our little valley and our, and our hill towns. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the holdup is. I don't either. All right. There we go. Start of the final quarter here in this field hockey matchup. And what I've realized, having not seen a field hockey game no, before tonight, fun. just looking at the uh, records of both teams, a tie is a lot more common in field hockey than it is in most other sports. Frontier has five ties this season. And you were talking at the talking about at the start of this game, uh, Frontier's last game, which was a tie against Longmeadow. A 0-0 zero, zero tie, actually, which seems like the likely outcome of this game as of right now. Nice way to use the line, bringing oh, it right nice. up. Oh, nice little. Ashley's cut into the middle. Is that would that qualify as a bunny hop right there? What she did, a little right over the stick. We'll give it to her. <laughs> Minichai is going to get the ball back though. Kills a little bit of the momentum that Frontier had. But if I remember, if I remember correctly, it. Uh, Ella Flanders, the Frontier goalie, had 14 shots against her during that Long Meadow game. Yeah. So I think it was 14, sh 14 shot, 14 shots on goal, um, Long Meadow, um, and one shot by Frontier. They wow. got one shot off on goal. So kudos to senior Ella Flanders, who's been a hardworking goalie for. For varsity for for five of her six years, I believe, wow. here at Frontier. Jeez. Minichog with the ball in the near corner. Drive nice gets stop. stopped by Taylor. Ashley Taylor Ooh, nobody puts there. it into the middle of the circle. There's Rebecca. Got a corner. Great play there by Frontier. Wow. Just stuck with it. Pass to the middle. Oh, another. Oh, they called oh. it against us. Dang. So now Minichog going to try and make something ha happen. Number 13 speeding down the far sideline. Tries to pass it into the center, but it's not there. So the ball is going to get turned over to Frontier. Ball is taken back by the Falcons. Minichug's got in a good scoring position here, but it's going to get cleared out by the Red Hawks. Macy DeMeo, I believe, bringing yeah. it up. 
and a lot. So Frontier's gonna keep the ball. Pass up to Ashley Taylor, who's not gonna be able to keep it in, but it's gonna stay Frontier's ball. So Harper Modesto takes the pass here, gets knocked around by a couple Falcons players. And it's gonna get turned over to Minichog. Frontier trying to make something happen. Gets it into the circle. There's a shot oh, on goal. Shot on Another shot forward, but it's going to go wide. <laughs> Let's hope. This, this is going to come down to who has who is the best conditioned team. When, you, when you're counting down the final minutes, who, who has that last bit of reserve left in the tank? Yeah. Who ends up being the more tired team in the last few minutes of this game? I don't, I'm not sure if she tripped or that was like a slide tackle or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> traditionally, you don't slide tackle in field hockey. Yeah, I, think I, didn't, I didn't think I'm gonna so. I'm going to chalk it up to that she lost her footing. Yeah. Oh, nice reverse. Falcons drive it up the field into the circle. Frontier tries to clear it. They get it out of the circle. I'm wondering if there's a do that there, there's a lot of slipping going on by both yeah, teams. Yeah, that would definitely make sense. Center pass by Minitrog. No one's there, so it's going to end up being Frontier's ball. Pass gets intercepted by Falcons. Taken by Lila Roach. Out of bounds on Minichog, so... Frontier, hopefully they can capitalize on this. Yeah, we've got just over eight minutes left now. Roach trying to make something happen, but Minichog's gonna get Bayer. Bounced off a of Minichog, so try and move it up the line there. Frontier's gonna fight for it. Taylor's gonna get the ball, try and get it around a couple defenders. She's not gonna be able to, oh. but the ball gets stopped. <laughs> hook hook with the with the stick. Yeah, that was a good call. You can see that. Is it gonna No, it's gonna it's gonna it's stay still in, in play. Bounds. It just died right there in the corner. Yeah. Can the Falcons capitalize on that? No, it's going to be Frontier's ball. Stay Frontier's ball. So what happened there, Miss Chapley? Because uh, personally, I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> I... Not sure what happens. Because we've got a player sitting a, down on yeah. the sideline. And the coach gonna be for Minichog minute. seems very upset. Anytime, yeah. You know, it's really, you know, when you're looking at the different angles, I didn't catch it because I had the team in front of me. Yeah. So there's a good chance that they may have given a warning. They persisted to do, to do the same offense, and so when it was done like yeah. almost back to back, mm -hmm. that sometimes you'll see when they'll we'll pull the yeah, card. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've the same perspective as you. I didn't see anything because the team was right in front of me. 
So right now, Frontier has the advantage with one more field player. Let's see if they can take it and capitalize. So they do get the ball off of a foul call. Pass up. Macy DeMeo's there. Tries to pass it up. Ashley oh. Taylor. That was a hack. You could hear that one up here. Yeah. The intent was to, you know, to get the ball, but sometimes yeah. you miss the ball and you hit the stick, and that they're going to call you, especially if they hear it that well. Yeah, that's for sure. There's a nice stop there by Roach. Number 13 for Minichog. Pushing it down the field all by herself, but there's going to be a foul call. Stays Minichog's ball. And they're going to get a nice opportunity here to try and make something happen. Number 11. Ball gets taken by Taylor. Up. And there's Rebecca trying to get the ball. Can't quite get a handle on it. We've got just under five minutes now left in this game. Still no score. And now the numbers are evened out on the field as number six for the Falcons yep. comes running back. Nice drive there. And then it just dies. It, yeah, it's... It feels like that should go on for. Yeah, but you really, you know, when you're doing such those drives, you really want to make sure there's going to be somebody there. Yeah. To get to it. And you know, otherwise it's for just both be teams. Ping pong back and forth. Yeah, for both teams, we've seen that happen a lot, where they have a nice drive, nice strong drive down the field, and then there's no one there, and it gets turned over. That's happened many times for both Frontier and Minnetrog. Call against Minichag. They're going to bring it up to the top of the circle. Frontier fighting for oh. it. Minichag comes out on the winning side of that one. Pass into the circle. Going it's gonna wide. Go out of bounds. Let's see how fast they can make this transition. 320 left in the game. Both teams want this win. You can feel it. Yeah. Pass up by Frontier, but there's no one there. Minichog passes it in, tries to get it to the circle. Rhodes is going to push her way up the sideline. Oh, and the ball is going to get stopped on the grass. Ooh, nice stop by Abby. Abby Grover stops the ball, passes it up to Taylor. Ball is going to get knocked back. Ooh. And call, Minichog. Call for Minichog. Wins a call. To the outside, doing a nice job getting it to the outside. 2.20 left in the game. Minichog is really putting the pressure on right now. Oh, yeah. Frontier is having a lot of trouble getting it out of their side of the field right now. Manichog pass into the circle is going to go out of bounds. Yeah. So she just she didn't carry it five yards and went a straight drive in. So they ah. lost that Minichog lost that opportunity. So and so now we're under two minutes left in this scoreless game. Got some fresh feet coming in for Frontier. Ashley Taylor's back in. And Taylor's going to get right Stella. to work. Frontier keeps the ball. Pass in from out of bounds. Going to go to Taylor, but she can't handle it. It's 
going to get taken down the field by number 15 for Minichog. Pass is whiffed and it's going to get sent back to Frontier. Oh. And there's a foul called. Number 15 uh, for Minichog is going to sit down. Yeah. So there was a very flagrant foul. Yeah. You could see yeah. that one. It was right so in front of gonna us. So it's going to be at least two minutes. And since the clock has stopped at the two-minute mark, we have less than two minutes to go. There's Roach going up the near sideline. Nice reverse. Good move there. Call in Frontier's favor. Roach going to try and make something happen. Looks for a pass. Tried to get that reverse and couldn't quite get that stick. Out of bounds on Minichog. So Frontier's Working against ball. the clock right now. Oh, yeah. Do they add on additional time at the end? Like nope. they do with soccer sometimes? Nope. They got to keep the There's pressure Taylor. on. There's Taylor. Gets knocked down. There's the game. That's game. All right. So we saw not a single goal tonight, folks. Scoreless game at Frontier Regional. And that is a good outcome for both teams. A pretty evenly matched pretty evenly game matched here. it was you know it was tough tough field conditions for for yeah. both teams oh definitely so that's going to put frontiers record at 7 2 and 6 and minitrog's record at 10 2 and 3 and this has been senior night for frontier um and the outstanding player um from Frontier, who also happens to be a senior, was uh, Lila Roach. This Ly game, yes, Lila she was, was definitely controlling that that all center over midfield. the field. And if you don't have a strong center midi, it's going to be tough on 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 your offense. Um, yeah. Ella Flanders, our other senior in goal, um, I believe she may have had one shot on goal. Yeah. With which her. you know um, that shows that the rest of the team's doing well, but. Yep. Yep, and you know, and there was lots of op you know there was lots of opportunities with uh, our third senior Rebecca Wallace West bringing it up. Mm -hmm. and yeah, she it was just, having some great offensive it just opportunities. Didn't, just didn't connect. Yeah, and as I said, going I think back that kind of conditions. I think that kind of sums up the whole game. They it just didn't connect for and both it, teams. For both teams, yes, exactly. Definitely. So, so again, mm. final score is zero to zero. Result of the game is a tie. And we are going to call it a night here at Frontier Regional. We hope everyone watching has a wonderful evening. I need to get somewhere warm. I don't know about you, Miss Chaplin, <laughs> but I'm just about ready to get out of here. So that's it for all of us here at FCAT. Mason Smith, Stacy Chapley, all the FCAT crew saying good night and thank you for tuning in to Frontier Community Access.